Today I'm going to show you two ways of dealing with uh, full Ubuntu images. One of them is doing the classic setup like I have here, which is a regular desktop running within a virtual box image. And the other one we're going to use uh, cloud init to configure. So first of all, let's look at the first one. So if you've spent the time to set up a, an image like this or to basically create it, um, all the customization comes after the install. So here we're just running a script that we're downloading from the internet, which in this case happens to be a script that I've created and uploaded to GitHub so I can run it on any machine I want. So what it does is it creates a user, it installs SSH, it configures SSH to run on different port, it removes the root permissions from the SSH config, it says I'm allowed to use public key authentication, um, it then configures the services, make sure they're running. Uh, it creates a home directory for the SSH keys and imports my SSH keys, public one, um, again from GitHub, and then sets the permissions for that said created user. Nothing super complicated, but it means that I don't need to do these things manually. So obviously that's a great thing. But obviously it's also not the best way of going about it, but we'll come on to that for a moment later. So I've left this machine, unfortunately, on my NATed range, so I'm just going to switch it across to the British adapter so we can get a, a nice IP here. I could also use host adapter, but for the moment I'm just going to use the British adapter because I want to be able to see it um, from my uh, other Linux machine, which in this case happens to be uh, the uh, Windows Linux subsystem, or subsystem for Linux. I'm always confused when I'm saying it loud. Anyway, here's my Ubuntu um, Linux subsystem. I'm going to go ahead and just SSH to the port and the IP. I'm going to say yes, because there's no host, and I'm connected. So I could theoretically just run this as a headless container in the background, and that would be sufficient. Um, I can also prove here that I am connected to this, and that I'm not cheating. So I'm just going to CD into downloads here. Um, I'm going to create a new file to prove a point that this is the actual connection and this is not some separate different machine somewhere else. Um, so I'm just going to create a file called read text and go hello from uh, SSH. Save file, close. And I can just pop over to the explorer on this machine, quickly open the downloads, and there's my readme file. Job done. So that's a very easy way of configuring a post install, but obviously it takes a while to set up these machines each time, and that really is annoying. So what is an alternative? Well, through power of the internet, and in this case taking a quick coffee break, let's go have a look at uh, cloud init. So the difference here is instead of creating the machine using VirtualBox directly, here I'm going to do it from my Linux machine on the Windows. So I need to do a couple of things, one of which is I need to go to a point which both Windows and Linux can see. So in this case I'm going to go to the temp folder on my Windows file system, which I can get to via the mount point uh, C and then the subfolder. I'm now going to download the file which I've created earlier. So this is a file that you can find on GitHub. Um, I'll put a link in the description. It's totally fine. All it's doing is just downloading the uh, SSH script. This is a SSH script that requires a couple of variables. One is the machine name, the amount of RAM, and the amount of CPUs. That's pretty much it. And what it does is it goes to uh, the repository and downloads the Ubuntu server cloud image file. So in this case, you can see we're going for 20.04, and it's downloading the OVA. So that's the uh, application uh, appliance import file that we're going for. And the reason we're doing this and not the image file or any of the disk files is I find this easier to work with, and I can use it as a golden image. So it's also going to make a couple of small tweaks on the way in. So as an example, the import process allows you to do the renaming. Um, it also allows me to then create the, the file that's needed. So when I say file, we have a cloud init file in here. So we're going to look briefly at how that's configured. So this will come up as a, a 
mounted CD drive within the image. But if we look at the file itself, in terms of what's fired, you see down here we have uh, the metadata file, which tells the machine what the host name is, which is based on a variable. Uh, we then have a user configuration file, which is based again on something similar. So we have a password and we say the password is fine enough password with a zero in it. Um, and this is then mounted at the end. So this means the machine will boot first time, see the file, it'll then reboot and eventually you'll get to this point. So at this point, I can now log in with Ubuntu and log in with a password of password, but with a zero instead of a uh, an O. So we just log in there correctly. And there we go. So it's simple as, right? So that's a different way of achieving the same result as the first one, but with a subtle difference. I can tell it to install additional files using the cloud in it. So there's lots of documentation out there. Um, so you can tell it to import keys, you can tell it to load packages, uh, make sure that the machine's up to date, any of those things. But here I'm just gonna go ahead and um, quickly go the example of something. I can now also SSH to this machine, which means I don't need to ever deal with the VirtualBox console again. I can just SSH to it and do anything I need to. So this is awesome for someone like me who, again, goes through many, many of these test instances frequently and doesn't want to set them up every time. I'd like to just boot them very quickly like this and then run through whatever tests I am and delete them. So using these cloud images is probably one of the quickest and easiest ways to get your own lab off the ground very quickly and do as much configuration as you want. Well, that about wraps it up. Um, I recommend you go out there and check out the, the cloud init um, conf configuration examples and see you next one.